this guy can't be blamed. He has an IQ of 50. But if they're saying, just sign this confession to murder and you'll be able to go home, that's not what's uh, about to happen. That's not what's about to happen at all. You're about to never go home. Ever. That's not good. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Have you ever had a wallet that feels so bulky? It feels like you're carrying around a brick. I, I had the same wallet since I was 18. It was this leather thing, which was really nice at the start, but then got all saggy as I filled it with crap and receipts and like loyalty cards that I never used. And I said goodbye to that wallet at long last because I got a Ridge wallet, as you should too. Look, I've been using this wallet, they say in the copy, a few weeks, but it's been like at least a year. When did Ridge start sponsoring me? It's been a long time since I've been using this, so I have swapped out. I used to use this burnt titanium one. I think I even used another titanium one. And then I switched to this black one because they sent me loads. So I just kind of test them all out, why not? And then they also sent me something else, the key case, which is sort of like a, a pocket knife or like a pen knife for all of your keys. So I put my work keys in here and then you just like, boom, that does the top lock, the outside lock, the bottom lock, the bins. <laughs> Easy! And also they've got 30 different styles to choose from and each one can hold 12 cards. Look, I don't have 12 cards. I got like two cards and my driver's license, like a normal human being. But I don't know, maybe you got like seven loyalty cards or seven credit cards. I don't know what you're up to, but Ridge will be able to handle it. Also they've got 50,000 five star reviews. So you know that you're getting a quality product. And the best part is so slim and compact that you hardly even notice that it's there. Look at this, look at this. Do you know it's there? No, you don't. So if you're looking for a new wallet or a key case, be sure to check out Ridge at ridge.com slash blaze to get the best offer. That's ridge.com slash blaze. And look, they're celebrating their 10 year anniversary. So if you make a purchase through March the 26th, you'll save up to 40%. And remember, Ridge is so confident that you'll like it that they offer a 99 day test drive and a lifetime warranty. So what are you waiting for? Get yourself a Ridge wallet, get yourself a key case. There's a link below. Thank you Ridge for sponsoring. And now today's video. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. As always, I'm your host, Simon Wammons here. Kevin, thank you, Kevin. Sometimes Danny, sometimes Kevin, sometimes someone else, but Kevin, Kevin and Danny are the big boys. Um, they write me a script. I've never read it before. Uh, unjust convictions, cases that shocked the world, getting really serious today. It's time to shit all over the justice system. Let's jump in. Generally speaking, laws are a good thing. We haven't got everything worked out yet, and America should definitely get rid of the insane cash bail system. Look, it's not me. Like, I'm British, but Kevin is American. He can talk shit about. Also, it is insane, though. Like, people are always like, Simon, well, you don't talk. Don't you talk about America. What do you know about America? And I'm like, well, I heard about the cash bail system and it seems utterly mental that it's like, oh, no, 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 you can be free and you can wander around as long as you have money. <laughs> so it's like there's one system for rich people and one system for poor people, which, uh, I don't know, that seems a little bit broken, doesn't it? What did it cost? $100 million. It's like that, uh, the, 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 the crypto dude. Um... Bankman freed and he's like yeah no 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 he can go on cash bail 250 million dollars <laughs> oh god <laughs> so much money you know also like if you're on that much bond right if you've got 250 million it's like they 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 think you're a mega flight risk and you're also probably going to go to jail forever so you'll be like yeah i'm sorry people who gave me 250 million i am out of here i am moving to belize <laughs> and i'm never coming back bye The chances are you're watching this from a country that has a mostly reasonable set of laws and a well-designed justice system to enforce those laws, and yet things have a tendency to go horribly wrong. I'd argue this isn't because the system is broken, but because the people are. We could have a whole argument about whether the system refers to the laws and proceedings as they are written down, or whether it refers to the entirety of those individuals that would enforce those laws, but let's just agree that people suck and move on. I think it refers to the whole system. Like... The system refers to the system. Well done, Simon. I mean, it means, like, the whole thing. Like, the justice system isn't just the courts, but it's all the way down to, like, the bobby on the street who's making the arrest to the prison service and and all of that stuff. One of the most insane miscarriages of justice that I've ever seen came out of the Philippines and involved the murders of Mara Joy and Jacqueline Cheong by a gang of eight rowdy youths. I'm not sure if Kevin's about to make a plug for it, but I've definitely done a video about this. Maybe Kevin even wrote it for my Casual Criminalist channel, and that is an insane case. It's insane. And I'm not just saying that, so you'll go watch that video after this one. It, it's 
it it blew my mind my mind is blown i remember having my mind blown while reading it go check it out so I guess I was saying it so you'd go check it out. The father of the Cheong sisters may or may not have been attempting to stir- turn state's witness against his notorious drug kingpin employer. <laughs> My tablet just let off a really loud sound. Did you hear that? It's like, boop, 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 boop. It feels completely unnecessary, but I have obviously multiple sets and I'd always just got the same iPad and moved it around my different teleprompters. And I was just like, that adds about three seconds to my day. So I bought individual teleprompters, individual tablets for all of my uh, sets. And apparently I forgot to mute this one. It's new. It's a new system I'm working on. No one cares. Let's move on. So this dude turning uh, state's witness against his boss. State's witness is like one of those own- words I only know just because I've seen movies. And it's like, he's going to turn state's witness. We got to take him out. I love those sort of movies. It's always very exciting. Just before his daughters vanished and the eight accused kids may or may not have been the children of that drug lord's political rivals. Oh my God. <laughs> if you live in a country that is that corrupt, I don't know, when was this? Was this a while ago or is this like modern day Philippines? It's one of those places where I, you, I'd always be like, I don't want to go there in case they're like, ah, ah, you know, I don't know. You just do, you don't do anything and you can end up in prison or shot. <laughs> Welcome to the Philippines, have a look around. Oh, crap. I'm not gonna be upbeat. Oh, it's an absolute. It's like when you go to Asia and you're walking through the airport. And I remember this. The beat. The, there was a sign at Colombo Airport. I'm pretty sure it was Colombo in Sri Lanka. And you'd go in and it'd be like, "Remember, this country has the death penalty for drug smugglers." And you'll be like, "Oh my God, I don't have any drugs on me, but that still makes me nervous. I'm not a drug smuggler. I've never smuggled drugs, and I'm still like, what if I do have drugs? What if there are drugs in my bag?" I remember once I was leaving that airport and. Uh, some dude next to me so he's just like i don't know regular tourist or whatever off somewhere and we're checking in and his bags like over the allowance and he's like mate do you mind putting my bag because you I, I didn't use any of my luggage capacity i just had hand luggage do you mind checking my bag and i'm like yeah i fucking mind <laughs> have you seen the sign about drug smugglers having their heads chopped off <laughs> Because I don't know, it's probably nothing in there. It's probably nothing to worry about. But it's like, bro, I'm not taking someone else's bag at the airport. That's what. That's how movies begin, and that's how I end up in prison for the next twenty years or shot. Come on, what are you talking about? And he was like, oh yeah, I see. <laughs> I don't think he had any drugs. Do you take drugs or alcohol? What is drugs? It's an absolutely insane story featuring a trial where the drug- judge frequently napped, testified on behalf of a witness who pretended to faint, and refused to allow the defense's 50 eyewitnesses to take the stand to provide an alibi because there were too many of them. <laughs> what the f***, man? <laughs> At one point in the story, a teenage girl successfully ran four armed hitmen disguised as police officers off her school's campus. I don't even remember that part of the story. It's so mental. The Central Park Five. Crime was running rampant in New York City in the late 1980s. In April 1989, a group of about 30 teenagers entered Central Park from Harlem to terrorize joggers and cyclists. Most of their actions amounted to little more than petty crimes. They threw sticks at pedestrians, they mugged them, and they hurled rocks at taxis. What are you up to? What's, what, what should we do this Saturday afternoon? I don't know, go cause trouble. <laughs> what are you going to do? Mug people and throw rocks at cars. Fucking hell. That's just like, I don't know, <laughs> causing trouble is, that is so beyond causing trouble. But some of their crimes got a little more intense. There were a couple of men they attacked, one of whom was beaten up so badly that he wound up spending two days in the hospital. I'm gonna throw rocks at cars and then put people in the hospital. Fuck, in, you're in the center of New York. How's that? You're gonna get arrested. He had beer and they didn't, so this seemed like the most logical way to get it from him. This was a pretty severe attack. No shit, he was in the hospital for two days, Kevin. And obviously, even the lesser crimes were still quite bad as well. However, these were nothing compared to another attack that was taking place in Central Park at that same night. Trisha Miley, a 28 year old investment banker, was going for a nightly jog through the park at around 9 pm when she was struck in the back of her head with a branch and knocked unconscious. Her body was dragged a few hundred feet off the park into the off the path into the woods where she was raped and beaten within inches of her life. Over the course of the night, reports of the assaults and robberies play- taking place in the park had been coming in, the police rounding up anyone in the park who could be described as fitting the description, and it wasn't until around 1.30 a.m. that Trisha's body was found in the woods. She was unconscious, suffering from hypothermia, and missing 80% of her blood. No, she wasn't. You'll be Surely you'll be dead with 80% of your blood missing. That sounds like misreporting. Is that possible? Jesus. I guess it wasn't really missing, as it was clearly all over the ground onto her body. Kevin, not the time, mate. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what the fuck? 
A lot of black and Hispanic teenagers were arrested that night, but there were five that the police were most interested in. 14-year-olds Raymond Santana and Kevin Richardson, 15-year-old Anton McRae, and 16-year-old Corey Wise and Yusuf Saman. Is this the one? Is this the case where Trump takes out an advert in the paper saying that they should all be convicted or something? Is this that story? This one's quite mental, right? I've heard of this. All five were interrogated for hours on end without a parent, guardian, or lawyer present. Oh, bros, we say it again. Like, whenever, if you get arrested, get a lawyer. Lawyer, 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 lawyer. You have nothing to lose. It doesn't make you look guilty. Lawyer, 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 lawyer. Even if you're innocent. Lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. <laughs> Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? The Constitution says you do. Wise and Salam did not need a parent or guardian present because they were 16, but the others absolutely did. Wait, 16's not 18? <laughs> You're not an adult? Eventually, all of them confessed to the rape and the assault. However, their stories didn't line up with each other or with the other facts. They all stated that they confessed because they were terrified and told that if they confessed, they would be allowed to go home. Um, that is what we call a lie. <laughs> lawyer, 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 lawyer! What'd you say to Babyface, huh? Why don't you say anything stupid? By anything stupid, I mean anything at all. Police also lied about having evidence against them, which is legal for them to do, but still pretty shit. Furthermore, Salam did not actually sign his confession. His mother arrived at the station and demanded a lawyer, so the police stopped interrogating him and he didn't sign the written confession nor record a videotaped confession as the others had. If you're in a police station and you don't have a lawyer and you're confessing to something you did not do, you just know that you've made very bad life choices up to that point, and it's still not too late. Lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. <laughs> Salam in particular stated why he confessed. Not only did the police lie about having fingerprint evidence, but he could hear them beating the sh out of Wise in the next room. They also taunted him by saying, you realize you're next. All five of them were indicted for assault, rioting, rape, and attempted murder. The attempted murder charge stemmed from the doctor's initial belief that Trisha would either die from her wounds or never wake up from the coma she was in. She did wind up waking up after 12 days, but the brain damage she sustained prevented her from ever remembering anything about that night. She ended up making a mostly full recovery and became vice president of the investment bank where she worked. As for the boys, public opinion was fiercely against them immediately following their arrest. Yeah, of course, because the police beat them into an inter uh, into a confession. Of course, public opinion would be against them. They confessed. People are not aware as much as they should be about these coerced confessions and the police being. D I mean, we're more aware of the police being dickheads these days. But I mean, holy, shit, of course they were. And when it came to New York City, there was no public opinion louder than that of Donald Trump. I knew it. Though not specifically mentioning the accused boys by name, Trump paid $85,000, that's over $200,000 today, to take out a full-page ad in every New York newspaper calling for the reinstatement of the death penalty and tangentially advocating in favor of police brutality. Oh my lord, Trump, what are you up to? In the, you became president somehow! It's amazing! You took out an ad for people who turned out to be innocent saying that they should bring back the death penalty. We're going to assume for this, right? And you became president. It's kind of impressive. It is impressive. You became president. If any anyone who becomes president is impressive. Like, people are like always like, oh, George W. Bush, he's not very bright. And I'm like, yo, he still became president. How many times have you been president? zero, isn't it? <laughs> In the ad, Trump stated, I want to hate these murderers, and I always will. I'm not looking to psychoanalyze them or understand them. I'm looking to punish them. Wow. Okay, hold that thought, Mr. Trump, because there may be some shocking new evidence that you'll want to see. I say that there may be because it's possible that this evidence was already public before Trump's bring back the death penalty ad ran across the city. Since Trisha had been raped, a rape kit was used and samples of her attacker's DNA were able to be identified. That DNA did not match any of the five boys charged with the assault in light of this important new evidence all five were found guilty anyway oh my don't confess to anything ever just shut your mouth whatever it is it's like um did you take that smelly dump in the toilet no <laughs> absolutely not was not me just deny everything because they were juveniles, the sentence was 5 to 10 years for the younger boys and 5 to 15 years for the two 16-year-olds. It was a baffling verdict, but DNA was still new and scary back in 1990, I guess. However, in 2002, another man wound up confessing to the attack. That was Matthias Reyes, a convicted serial rapist who had been arrested for committing numerous attacks that closely resembled the one in Central Park. Maybe he's the guy. Should we test his DNA? Wait, did they test the DNA? Did I just read that they did that? No, he just confessed for some reason. 
In fact, at least one of his other victims was also found in Central Park just two days before Trisha was, but I guess... I mean, I don't... Look, Trisha as a person entirely blameless because she is the victim of a brutal rape. However, I don't know if I'd go jogging in Central Park if two days previously someone had been raped. I don't think I'd ever go in Central Park again, and I'm a dude. But I guess none of that was important evidence. I'm still going to get in trouble for that, aren't I? That's not victim... I'm not blaming the victim. Obviously, she is not to be blamed. I just... I'm just saying, like, Central Park seems pretty scary. Why would you go there? Don't go there at night. Very on during their incarcerations, Rares and Wise crossed paths in Rikers where, when they got into a fight over the television channel, if they had wanted to watch the same show that day, the lives of the Central Park Five could have been forever changed, but instead it would take until 2002 when Reyes and Wise met for a second time. They really went, they've been in prison for 12 years. This is some f***ing bullshit. This time around, they had a much more pleasant encounter, and Wise was still quite friendly with Reyes, so friendly that Reyes suddenly felt bad that these five young men had spent years of their life in prison for a crime that they didn't commit. He confessed to raping Trisha and acting alone, as he had in all his other crimes. Unlike the previous confessions that didn't line up with reality, Reyes's account gave accurate details that matched the forensic evidence. Most importantly, his DNA was tested against the rape kit, and it was a match. I really f***ing hope that those five kids got a sh load of money because f this and f the police coercing those confessions a judge overturned the conviction in december of that year by that point wise had already become the last of the central park five to be released from prison from the for those crimes but it was still important to clear their names yeah of course it was because otherwise you're a felon forever that's going to affect your job prospects all of that stuff and you're probably on like the sex registry right because this was a violent sexual crime. The NYPD conducted an extremely thorough internal investigation into the Central Park jogger case, but they concluded there was no wrongdoing on the part of any of their officers. Uh, <laughs> we've looked into the case involving ourselves and decided that we are not to blame. No one's got a, that, 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 that. That's cool. We just investigate ourselves, do we? <laughs> How about we don't be doing that? After a legal battle that would last more than 10 years, New York City settled a civil lawsuit filed against them by the five wrongfully convicted men. The settlement was in the amount of $40 million, or roughly $1 million per person per year that they spent in prison. Um, f yeah. The damage done to a person's life when they're unjustly forced to spend their formative years in prison may be irreparable, and things were even worse for the five since they were branded as rapists. The worst thing you can be in prison is a snitch, then a pedo, then a rapist. A few million dollars wasn't going to make all the pain and suffering that was unfairly inflicted upon these men go away, but it could sure help. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. A mil a lot. I don't want to say that I, I definitely wouldn't go to prison for a million dollars a year, but uh, also it's a million dollars a year. It's not bad. As for Trump's opinion on the matter, it hasn't changed. Okay, Trump, f*** you. In 2019, after claiming that no black people would vote for Biden and they would all be voting for him, which is, uh delusional he was gently reminded of the ad that he paid to run when interviewed by the new york times he refused to apologize for his previous statement i love the old days you know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this they'd be carried out on a stretcher folks he later stated at the white house quote you have people on both sides of that they admitted their guilt if you look at some of the prosecutors they think that the city should never have settled that case so we'll leave it at that <laughs> Oh my lord. Leon Brown and Henry McCollum. Leon Brown and Henry McCollum were brothers aged 15 and 19 respectively. They were African American kids living in Jersey City, New Jersey, and they were both intellectually disabled. Their IQs were measured at 49 and 51, which made them severely developmentally challenged. At 19 years old, Henry had barely learned to read at a second grade level. On December the 23rd, 1983, 11 year old Sabina Boy decided to go out for the day. Early reports came that she was going to an arcade, but her four year old sister later claimed that she was going to return a bicycle to Leon. Because this claim came later and the girl was only four, it is possible that she had been tampered with as a witness before making the statement. Sabrina never returned home, and on the 25th, her father formally reported her missing. After two days of searching, her body was finally found, raped and murdered, suffocated to death with her own underwear. Four? Four years old? This is this is not what I sign up for on Brainblaze. This is the sh I have to deal with on Casual Criminalist. I don't want to hear about. Can't it have been just people like, oh, why'd he go to prison? Oh, yeah, he was just stealing or some shit. What's wrong with that? <laughs> There's plenty of people in prison for stealing or drugs or, I don't know, running a criminal enterprise. Something like that. Something mild. 
Ah, oh, Jesus. What are we even doing here? I thought Brain Blaze was supposed to be a fun cocaine-fueled romp. Yes, me too, Kevin. What are we doing here? Anyway, there was some evidence found at a scene like bloody clothes, a cigarette butt, and some empty beer cans, because this was 1983 when finding cigarette butts at a crime scene was actually realistic. Police could have tried to pull fingerprints from this evidence in the hopes of developing a lead, but they didn't bother yet. They already had a lead in the form of an unsubstantiated rumor that some high school kid claimed he heard. Wow, that sounds reliable. According to 17-year-old dumbass Merc Pants on Fire, Henry was guilty not only of this crime, but several others over the past year, including robbing a pimp. The story didn't make a lot of sense, but it was enough to bring Henry in for questioning, because, I don't know, how about why not? Because it seems to be utter nonsense. It was another hours-long interrogation that involved the police lying about evidence, claiming there was a witness that put Henry at the scene of the crime. In between calling him various racial slurs, they also promised that if he signed a document waving his Miranda to rights and signed a confession they would let him go home again this guy can't be blamed he has an iq of 50 but if they're saying just sign this confession to murder and you'll be able to go home that's not what's uh, about to happen that's not what's about to happen at all you're about to never go home ever that's not good just don't do it don't do it obviously henry wasn't capable of really understanding what was going on he definitely did not understand the rights he was being asked to waive and he couldn't even read the confession that he was being asked to sign in the end he signed a confession stating that he leon and three other boys had gang raped sabrina and killed her while this was going on leon and their mother arrived at the station leon was similarly interrogated and coerced into signing a confession when the police wanted him to sign away his miranda rights they did so by gently suggesting that if he didn't it'd be executed in a gas chamber subtle guys real subtle and classy um real real like solid police work there you fucking bellends not only was leon unable to read the confession he couldn't even properly sign it instead he just wrote his name at the bottom in big block letters you know like somebody who's very much mentally a child this is the guy you're framing for crimes huh i don't know if the confessions were based on what henry and leon were convinced to say or not but despite the fact that the police typed up both confessions the details within the two confessions still managed to contradict one another that's because while these guys had an iq of 50 apparently the police officers interrogating them had an iq of 75 <laughs> All three of the boys had airtight alibis, with one of them not even being in the same state at the time. You might think that those details would matter, but instead both of the boys were tried and sentenced to death one year later. Far Hell. Maybe you'd think that some of the physical evidence would have helped them out. Fingerprints were pulled from one of the beer cans in preparation for the trial, and those fingerprints did not match Leon or Henry. Can you imagine being in court? I, I know it's like generally the... Isn't I, this might just be a legal drama thing, but generally the person who's accused doesn't take the stand very often. These guys should definitely go on the stand. The jury, they'd be like, so who else was there? And they'd be like, no one else was there. I wasn't even there. And how did they get convicted of this? It's, even though there's a confession, it's just mental. This would be a pretty big deal to the jury, if not for the fact that the police and the prosecution buried this evidence, making sure that it was never revealed at trial. Brilliant work. How about, how about police? You don't railroad people into convictions. How about when there is new evidence for someone else being the criminal? Well, there's two things. One, someone is innocent, and someone else is guilty out there for you to go and catch. And I don't give a shit what it does to your statistics and all of this stuff, because... Uh, maybe uh, a kid getting a needle in his arm is uh, more important than that. Perhaps, don't know, just suggesting it, maybe. The police also didn't think it was important that Roscoe Artis, a man with a 26-year history of serial rape and habitual sex offences who just happened to also be a suspected serial killer, lived within feet of where Sabrina's body was found. Sure, that seemed like something that would be worth investigating, but remember that we're working with the gift of hindsight here. It's easy for us, looking back, to immediately suspect the known rapist who was essentially found standing over the body, but that rumor from some high school kid was pretty compelling stuff. I assume Kevin's being sarcastic there, because you don't need hindsight. You just need an IQ of more than 75 to figure that out. Everything about this case was an unmitigated disaster, yet Supreme Court Justice Anthony Scalia cited it. I've heard of that guy why have i heard of that guy did he get into politics later or something or does everyone hate him or love him is he like super divisive if he's like and then they deserve to go to prison sorry they deserve to go to the gas chamber i don't know if this is this guy who knows who knows cited as a prime example of justification for the death penalty did you look at the, the facts of the case at all <laughs> scales 
Scalia also used it to speculate on the prevalence of wild keen t killer teens. Okay, that sounds like a horror movie. And Henry's mugshot was frequently used in Republican campaign mailings designed to exploit racialized fear-mongering. Why should any political campaign be designed to exploit racialized fear-mongering? That seems like an ex insane thing to say. I don't understand. Who's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's get some racial fear-mongering in the campaign. Who's... What? I, I don't understand. Although Henry and Leon both were able to get new trials in the early 1990s, both were again found guilty. Henry was again sentenced to death, while Leon was only sentenced to life in prison. They would each wind up spending 31 years in prison before DNA evidence and testimony from one of Roscoe's death row cellmates cleared them of any charges. The DNA from the crime scene matched Roscoe, and while he had never gone so far as to confess to killing Sabrina or to his cellmate, who said that Henry and Leon were innocent, the former cellmate also had a whole lot of information about the crime that was not public knowledge, including exactly how the girl died and the colour of her underwear. On September the 3rd, 2014, Henry and Leon walked out of prison free. As an apology for the 31 years of their lives that were unceremoniously stripped away from them, they were each presented with 45 million... Wait, what? They were each presented with $45 cash money. Like, 45 million... $45? Like, no million? They were in prison for 31 years. Based on that, those previous people, they should get $31 million. They better get $31 million. What the f***? Without an official pardon, that's all the money they were eligible for. How the f Why would they even need an official pardon? Why would there be a pardon? Just to have the conviction removed, as if it never existed. Isn't... Well, a pardon essentially does that, doesn't it? But it should just be removed. It should be like it never happened, except for the 31 years in prison, which you'd get $31 million for. In fact, more. Because I feel like 10 years in prison for... Like, it gets exponentially worse the more of your life they take away. Because going to prison for 10 years between, like, 16 and 26 and getting $10 million, that's not the same as going to prison from, like, 20 to 50 and getting $30 million. Because that is or like 50 to 70 or whatever it's it gets worse the older you get because you have less time left fortunately an official pardon came in 2015 and they have since received a combined 75 million dollars in restitution yeah it's even more it's even more exactly like i wanted excellent Unfortunately, they have been heavily exploited by lawyers, scammers, and their sister, so I just hope there's still enough left of it for them not to have to worry about money ever again. With IQs that low, you, I there has to be lawyers. You've got to be, like, exploited by lawyers. Lawyers are the people who should be protecting your interests for a fee. Whoever's exploited, if that's, if, if they're taking a percentage or something like that, f*** you. You're exploiting people who are too stupid to know better, and it's, uh, it's morally reprehensible, f*** you, if that's what you're doing. I don't know if you're doing that, allegedly. And if that's what you are doing, allegedly, then in my opinion, you're a piece of shit. My apologies that there wasn't a lot of light-hearted jest in an episode about grave injustices in the world with any luck. Martin Shkreli. Yeah, exactly! The farmer dude! That's what I want to hear about, not some guy who, like, murdered a four-year-old, Kevin. Holy shit. So hopefully soon a release of uh, a series of cocaine bear NFTs so we have something less heavy to talk about next time. <laughs> please, please. Even if you're innocent. Lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. Lawyer, 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 lawyer. Lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. <laughs>